What's up team? This is going to be a reaction video to the latest updates of InDesign and Illustrator. And those videos take forever to watch. So I've been skimming through them and then finding out what the new stuff is. So you don't have to watch through the 50 minutes of just random talk. I'm just making this quick summary at the start of this video because I lost quite a bit of footage of my genuine reactions to the new features of Adobe. And I don't want to reenact them because it wouldn't be as genuine. So here we're going to just quickly take a look at what these new features are. So starting off with InDesign, we have SVG import. This is such a good new feature because for a while we've been wanting to put SVGs into our documents. Um, and the fact that now that they've got support for Im importing SVG files, that just changes the game. Column rules is actually another really cool one. Column rules allows you to create rules for like when you create a text box, for example, you can put it into columns and then you can have lines appear in, in between each column and it's all responsive and it can adjust to however you set the settings. And instead of manually putting in those lines and manually adjusting the, the columns, then yeah, this whole new feature makes it so much easier to do. InDesign also now supports variable fonts, so if you're a fan of variable fonts, since it was introduced into Illustrator previously, um, you can now use variable fonts. Variable fonts are really cool because you can change the way that the fonts look by just little increments and making them look thicker or more slanted, however you want. Instead of the like the usual, you know, regular bold italic, they've now finally introduced something that I know a lot of designers out there have been waiting for. They now have reverse spell check instead of going forward all the time. Find similar images is another one where uh, you can find a similar image to what you've currently got in your document. So if your um, if your creative director comes along and says something like, hey, um, I don't actually like that image. I think we're going on the right track, but uh, do, do you have any other options? You can just click on the image, click find similar images, and through the Creative Cloud libraries, you will be able to find any other images that you have. And it even searches Adobe Stock, so you can look for similar images through that. I'm not going to talk too much about the other features that were added to InDesign. They didn't stick out to me as much, but... Um, it's all there on the left for you to see. All right, let's talk about the new features of Illustrator. So there isn't too many new features with Illustrator, but there are a couple of really good ones. The one I want to talk about mainly is the auto spell check, which I think is something that should have been rolled out across all of the Adobe software. But I guess maybe they're just testing it out on one for now, like they did with the variable fonts. So with the auto spell check, basically it does exactly what it says. So you can misspell a word and then it will have a little underline underneath it, kind of like what Microsoft Word and Google Docs. And likewise, you can right click that word and it will come up with a drop down menu showing the suggested word. Anyway, that is all for this little recap. I'm going to show footage now of my reactions to these new features being announced. Feel free to continue watching if you like, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. But before we continue with the footage of me reacting to Adobe updates, I just want to make a quick shout out to Esteban. Thank you so much. I just realized that you are the 100th like on my Facebook page. So yeah, thank you very much. Now let's roll the video. All right. What's up team? Today we are going to be reacting to the latest updates for Adobe. I have not heard what these new features are yet. They just announced them at Adobe Max 2019 and we're going to watch these videos that they've been posting onto YouTube and we're going to react to um, all the new features. So without further ado, here is the video called What's New in Illustrator and InDesign? Deb, thank you so much for being with us. Uh -huh. I've been uh, working and partying a lot, so my voice is a little bit lower than usual. Yeah, that's all right. That's why we have these nice mics. Yes, yes, that's why we got the mics. <laughs> Looking very professional today. We are in Max, as Kathleen said, mm -hmm. and it's very exciting. I'm, gonna... right, I'm just going to pause it there right now. Um, one thing that I like to do, because today there is just so much content out there, so what I like to do is I like to jump into the settings for a video like this especially, like 58 minutes long jump into 2 times speed speed through the video a lot faster so let's do that now 
going to be sharing some videos and some photos of these amazing conference items. Oh, yeah, definitely. You're going to see the conference yeah, later. Yeah, we're going to be doing the conference later. She's made her dance moms. Yeah. Doing great, sweetie. She's on a <laughs> new project. Now, it does sound like chipmunks are talking when you speed it up a lot, but after a while, you get used to it. I don't know if you've been watching PewDiePie videos. I've always had PewDiePie videos at two times speed. There's been some times where I had PewDiePie videos on normal speed and it just seemed too slow. So I, I just constantly just put it on two times now. Say hi, Chris. <laughs> Amazing. So as you can see. Actually, you know what? Let's put it back to normal speed because I don't think you guys are going to be understanding what's happening. And what I'll do, I'll just crop out all these little bits that are not important. So we get just the best, the best reactions. All right, let's do it. We're at a huge conference. I think there's up to 17,000 people here this week, and we're going to be streaming all day today and then uh, tomorrow as well. And if you want to watch any of the replays from the rest of today and yesterday, you can do so if you scroll down on the page. We got all the replays. I know we like never stop. They yeah, always do. Mm -hmm. And I like try to catch up. Yeah, and I guess to, uh, during this stream, we're also going to be doing a three month Creative Cloud subscription chat and win. Woo! So when you see the fireworks going off behind us, that's when you know it's about time to But let's get started. One of the first... Uh... They've said let's get started like three times already. Come on, we want some new design skills guys. Let's do this. Um, features that I want to show and reveal to you guys if you've not I've seen the keynotes, is the amazing column rules in the text frame. So I don't know, many of you have been using text frame before. Um, text frame are literally the box where we place the text. Yeah. When we work with a multi-column layout, such this one right here, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna show you how to create a multi-column in a second. I don't know if you ever needed to have some line that go around just to define the column a little bit better. In the past, what we had to do was to go in our toolbar, grab our stroke, click, uh. all shift, blah, and I'm already tired. Yeah, and imagine if you had to do that like for 20 pages. No. And also, you, you know, you're gonna have to check the color and then make sure that it fits the height. Mm -hmm. And what if you change text? The stroke is gonna stay there and you're gonna have to go back and do that again. Mm -hmm. That's not gonna happen anymore because mm -hmm. with Adobe InDesign 2020, we have the amazing column rules. Mm -hmm. So if you have a multi-column text, just like this one, all you have to do is, I have two ways actually to access it. One is to access the pro- Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I was just, like, I was just focusing on what they were saying for a bit, but then, Right here on this screen, they have all these new features just listed out for me. So, do I have to even watch the rest of this video? Well, let's see what they've got there. What's new? Column rules. So, I guess they've come up with a way to make it so it's easier to make columns in a text box. It also says here, variable, variable fonts are now um, supported by InDesign, which is really cool. That was something I liked about InDesign recently when they introduced variable fonts. Uh, find similar images. Reverse spell check. No, no, there's a typo there. Reverse spell check. Um, that's kind of interesting. Oh yeah, that's actually really good because I don't think they had that. It, you can only go forward, not back. So yeah, that's, that's good. Um, SVG import. Um, I'm just going to assume that means you can now finally put SVGs into InDesign, which is great, another cool thing, um, and Adobe Asset Linking. Okay, I'm not too sure what some of those mean, but let's keep watching. Property of the text frame, and you can do so with our amazing shortcut, Command B, that allows us to open that text frame option. And as you can see here, we have column rules. This is the new feature of InDesign 2020. So you can click and insert some column rules. Of course, click on preview in order to see the way they look like. I have a dark background, so I'm gonna go ahead and check some of appearances and use a white color, and here they are. So they are automated. That means that if I move my text, they automatically 
um, follow the, the, the height and the width of the text. Mm -hmm. And what happens if we add more, more columns? You go back to general, add columns, and... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I was not expecting that. Um, that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Like, I didn't get what she was saying at first with the whole, like, stroke and then putting it in manually. But now that you can actually do this, like, within the text box, that is just amazing. Alright. Well, let's get back into it. And another line comes up. Magic! So they are completely you know, active with your text. Yeah, they're you, responsive. Yeah, they're, exactly. I usually use the word for, for website, but yeah. I think... <laughs> in fits, a different way. Yeah, it fits, it fits properly for, for what these amazing column rules are. They are mm -hmm. responsive, they adapt to the text that you're using. I'm going to just show you real quick again how to get into this property panel. Control B. Mm -hmm. And just for those of you that don't know how to create, a multi-column text. I'm just going to show you how to do that. So I'm just going to copy and paste some of this text by selecting and pressing Command C to copy. And I'm going to go on our white page over here. I'm going to press W to enter our invisible grids. And I'm going to go and press T to open my type tool and drag to create a text frame. I'm going to press Command V to copy the text. We don't see it because it was white. We were yeah. working on a dark background. But not a problem. Command A to select. Go on the fill. Select black. And here we go. We are, uh, have our text here. The reason why I like it in blue is because I'm using paragraph style and I've edited a paragraph style. Uh, but don't worry. We, cre we create a new paragraph style by pressing this little button over here in our properties panel. And here we go. in the current version of InDesign. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah. It goes back to normal. So what we want to see here is how to split this text frame into columns in order to then use our amazing root. Okay, I've seen enough of the columns. Let's skip this a little bit. over too long. Right, so let's do this. Let's do this. Feature number three, which is also very amazing, is um, finding similar images. Now, yes. because of the integration of Adobe Stock in InDesign, mm -hmm. and because of our amazing CC libraries, we can choose different images, we can change images within the canvas. We don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to waste time. We like to work smarter. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is to select the image. Let's say, for example, our client, our art director say, you cannot use that image. We want something a little bit different, but not too different. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my God. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, where am I going to find? I have to go and check a million images. Mm -hmm. Nope. Adobe Design 2020 made it easier for you. All you have to do is click on the image, press control or right click with your mouse. And here we go. Here it is. Find similar images. One click. And as you can see on your panel, our CC libraries are working for us finding images which are either similar in color or in layout. So all you have to do is choose the image that you find more appropriate. Incredible. Oh, I'm really digging this one. Yeah. And all you have to do is to press plus and add it to your library. Mm -hmm. You don't have to license it yet if you're just trying it. Of yeah. course, if you're going to use it, you're going to have to license it, but it's not uh, the moment yet. And then when you go back to your link, you can see this little image that allow you to relink from the CC libraries just down here. And all you got to do is to click on this link and go on the image that you have added to your library. And this is a little bit difficult to see Adobe InDesign Angels, if you hear us, but there is a button down here that says relink. Oh, down below us. Down yeah, below. <laughs> and if you press it, boom, done. Adobe Kadabra is yeah. changed. Adobe Kadabra. Resize our document without work. Guys, is that we can add SVG. For those of you, and what I want to show you guys is that we can add SVG. Wow. We finally did it, guys. 
SVG in Adobe InDesign. Let's do it. For those of you who do not know what SVG are, uh, those are scalable vector graphics. They are used more and more, especially when designing for web, because they allow to resize our document without making any lossy um, image. Mm -hmm. They're very uh, much used. Press SVG to quality, create a frame, what happen anymore. So all we have to do is um, create a frame by clicking here on our frame tool. I very conveniently have one there just on top of my website, <laughs> so I can add my logo SVG. Nice. Press Command D to import and place. I'm just gonna go on my desktop. I hopefully have my SVG saved there. So we pretty much so it. logo SVG file mm -hmm. and we open it and actually is an SVG file directly oh. in our InDesign document. Isn't yeah. that amazing? Yeah. Look. For a very long time, we've wanted to add SVG into InDesign. We were designing something the other day, like a little brochure. And we designed a lot of these little icons and SVGs, but we weren't able to actually put them into the brochure and we didn't really want to export them again as like higher res PNGs. Like we had PNGs, but they weren't high res enough for the brochure. Um, it, just, it just took more time than it needed to. But now that you can actually add SVGs, that changes the game. Looking beautiful, no loss. And it's brand new in InDesign 2020. Yes. Very cool. So I think we have two features. One that I can show you in one minute, actually mm -hmm. two minutes, yep. is the spell check. Ooh. So as you guys probably know, don't know, we can access the spell check in InDesign by pressing Command I. And that's been always been there, so no big news. But if you look closely, we now can go backward. understand why they didn't have this before but well I guess they've they've finally decided to do something quite quite clever I mean we, we we've needed this so we don't have to go through like a full circle before we do that I mean actually now that I think about it going through a full circle may actually get you to look at things properly but oh well this is this is really cool that they've added backwards Let's do this, guys. What? How many of you have been doing skip, 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 skip? Uh -huh. Oh my god, I skip, should have fixed that. And then by the time you have to do it again, you forgot about it. Oh. That's not gonna happen anymore. We can reverse. So all you have to do is press backward. In this case, of course, we gotta start, but yeah. let's, for example, move forward and move forward. And now I just realized that I pressed forward. Oh no, I didn't edit it. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is go backward and go back in our edit mm -hmm. and you can find the word that it was previously there and you can move comfortably Amazing. forward and back right. the amazing is because as work at on our paragraph style the reason why mm -hmm. and the difference in your uh part when i use this text is to select the text that you want to use for the shortcut and press to the I make a three month subscription to Creative Cloud. We're going to ask you a question, and when you do, you will be entered to win. So, is there anything that you want to ask the chat? Should we ask something that we said? Whatever okay. you want. Okay, I'm going to ask a question. How do you access the text frame option? I gave you the. I wasn't even in the live chat, and I remember. Control B. Shortcut before. Okay, let us know. We will be back in a couple seconds. Was it? Oh, okay, we got it. Yes. Nice. Yes, guys. See if anyone else does. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Command B, exactly. You know, this is when you can see who's actually Command. watching. Like, Command B or Control B, because we are PC users here. And I know all you other designers out there, are like 
cringing in your little chairs, but going, oh, but we use the Max to use. <laughs> Windows are perfectly fine to do graphic design. Copyright. Windows are perfectly fine to do graphic design. I like that rhyme. Oh, triple rhyme. We are on a roll today. All right, guys, let's do this. Lots of new names pop in because they want to win that subscription. <laughs> I don't blame them. Very nice. Well, you can copy now and put mm -hmm. it again just so you remember it. Yeah, this is a random winner. So whatever you put in chat, you are entered and we're going to have a magical random name appear above us in just a few Ooh, moments. Let's I see had to... My friend, yes. I wish that you know this new feature was there at mm -hmm. the time. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Would have been but helpful. Now yeah, would have been helpful. Mm -hmm. Huge time saver. Yeah. So we're a winner just yet. Now we do. Oh, do congratulations, Monia! Monia. Yeah. Congratulations, Monia! Yay. All right. I think I got everything I needed from InDesign. Let's try and skip to Illustrator. Yeah. So just a little bit. I'm Better. Okay, here. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go back into Illustrator. And again, what I've done here is changed a little bit. I'm going to open my window just to make sure that we do not get confused. Uh, what I've done here, again, we do not have the usual beautiful leisure of the two hour stream. Oh. Um, so I've already created some. Uh, design just oh. that are specific to our um, new feature cool. uh, for Adobe Illustrator so we can actually read together have a look and then we're gonna try them on this little artboard down here great let's try it so the first one is also a spell check feature in Adobe Illustrator 2020 I never used Adobe Illustrator for text before mm -hmm. because I'm dyslexic I speak and write three languages I can spell. Bottom line, no matter how many excuse I want to find, bottom line is that I can spell. Not your, not your strongest trait. Yes. So Adobe Illustrator was like, uh uh, I had to jump from you know one app to the other, but not anymore. We not only we have the spell check, but that happens automatically while we write. So let's have a look. I'm gonna click and drag this. Whoa. That's text so frame over here okay. and I'm gonna go ahead and add some more text so I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can have a better look and I'm gonna write hell oops hello with um, too many hell and as you can see we have a red line so it's telling me hey Claudie you don't have to write it like that <laughs> you don't auto spell check wow this should be rolled across all of the programs. Not to. No. <laughs> it's not really the current way of saying it. And also, it acts with all the different aspects that you will expect from an autocorrector. And for example, you can right click and press in order to have a suggestion Lovely. of the right. That's amazing. That is amazing. That needs to be on all programs. Saves you having to press Control I. Okay, on spelling, you can go. Control or Command I. To that dictionary, you can add it to your dictionary. Uh, writing anything. Oh. Not worry about it. <laughs> so let's go. We need to move fast. Uh -huh. Let's go on our path simplification. This is so amazing. This is really amazing. So, as you guys see, I faked all these little anchor points, <laughs> but we're actually going to go and uh, see how our path looks like. Probably we're going to use these other. These other little leaves here. All right. We're gonna click and drag. Yes, thank you so uh -huh. much. That's like spelling back in its place. Create a duplicate, like Kathleen was saying. You have to select on the shape that you wanna duplicate or the text. Press and hold out an option or option and drag over whatever you wanna place the duplicate. So see the anchor point, we're gonna switch to the outline view. To do that, we have a shortcut, shortcut coming, and the shortcut is Command Y, Ooh, and outlines. that allows you to just see the outline. I call it the skeleton. I've been going for ages and ages as a, this is the skeleton Spooky. of my design. <laughs> <laughs> so, Halloween's over. Click over here to watch the season finale of Grand Patrol episode five, and click over here to watch another one of my videos. See you guys next time. Let's do this!